Hi, today I'm going to talk about the Intermediate Value Theorem. And as usual, I'm going to explain it with the aid of an example. And in this example, you're going to see somebody you know, uh, my cat Roxy. Let's see Roxy again. And you're going to meet somebody new, my other cat, Medical. Let's see Medical. In that picture, Medical was helping me grade papers. Uh, but let me tell you something about both Medical and Roxy. They both love food. Medical and Roxy, they eat food really fast. One day, I noticed it took them 30 seconds from the point where they started to eat to the point where they got bored and walked away. On that particular day, Medical started with 72 grams of wet food, and when he left, there were two grams left. On the other hand, Roxy started with 75 grams of wet food, and when she walked away, there was one gram left. But I started to wonder, was there a time when their food dishes, Medical and Roxy's, had the exact same amount of food in it? I know they started with different amounts, and I know they finished with different amounts, but was there a time in the middle where they had the exact same amount? To answer this question, we're going to make use of the Intermediate Value Theorem. This says if you have a continuous function, and it's on some closed interval, a less than or equal to x less than b, and there's some value d between the uh, f of a and f of b, then there has to be a number c uh, between a and b such that f of c equals d. But how does this crazy abstract theorem help us solve this problem about cats and cat food? Well, to get us started, we need some functions around. And we're going to have two functions around. We're going to have f sub m of t and f sub r of t. Now, f sub m is the amount of Medical's food left at time t. And f sub r is the amount of Roxy's food left at time t. All right. Now, we know something from our setup of the problem, we know that F sub M of zero is 72. Medical started with 72 grams of wet food. And at the end of 30 seconds, Medical had two grams of wet food left over. So that's F of M equals, uh, F of M of 30 equals two. Now, Roxy on the other, other hand started with 75 grams of wet food. And after 30 seconds, she had one gram left over. Hmm, but, uh, to use the intermediate value theorem, we need, own, we need exactly one function, but we have two, and that's, that's one too many. Well, here we're going to use a trick, all right? And the trick is very simple. We're going to subtract. And subtract what, you may ask? Well, we're going to subtract the two functions. We're going to subtract. We have the amount of food that Medical has at time t. We're going to subtract from that the amount of food that Roxy has at time t. And that's going to be our new function, f of t. And now f of 0 is equal to, well, 72 minus 75, which is negative 3. And f of 30 is 2 minus 1, which is 1. OK, well, how does this help us exactly? Well, let's see the intermediate value theorem applied to this function f. OK, so first of all, f of t is continuous. How do I know this? Well, f sub m is the amount of food that Medical has, and it's wet food, and he's basically just kind of licking it away. And f sub r is the amount of food that Roxy has, and she's also licking it away. And so these, these things are not changing very much as uh, time changes. So that's really what a continuous function is. And the difference of continuous functions is continuous, so f of t is continuous. And we know that f of 0 equals negative 3. And we know that f of 30 equals 1. So by the intermediate value theorem, there is some time, I'm going to call it c, some time c where f of c is equal to, what's the name, is equal to 0. Now you might say, well, how does that help us? I thought. What's, what does it mean to be zero? It means, it means that at some time, Medical and Roxy had the same amount of food because their functions are equal. 
So we've seen an application of the intermediate value theorem. I know it's kind of a silly application with cats and cat food and stuff, but you can imagine that there are more practical applications. And in fact, I encourage you to go out and find your own applications. That's how progress and science is made, by applying things that already exist and inventing things that don't. Now let's go do some more math.